What's up guys, this is Will Schustrick with Disc Golf Instruction. We're in Daphne, Alabama at Daphne Central Park Disc Golf Course. We're here to talk about the disc golf death moves that are ruining your disc golf game. And here they come. Death move number one. All right guys, this is one of the first common problems that a lot of beginner players develop. And it's typically whenever they go and buy their first disc. A lot of beginners, whenever they go buy their first disc golf disc, are looking for the fastest disc that the store is selling. And really what you guys need to really focus on is to buy something that is slow and straight so you guys can learn the correct form. Uh, one of the main things about throwing a driver with a slow arm speed is the driver is not going to fly correctly. It's going to come to the ground, going to go hard, and you're going to end up wanting to throw overhand or sidearm and not learn to develop a backhand. What you want to do is to get that putter, get that mid-range, learn to throw it straight, keep it in the fairway. You want to learn the correct release angles out of your hand. Typically, whenever you throw a driver, you do not want to release it with a hard anhyzer out of your hand. You want to really try to focus on either a flat or slight hyzer release. And if you have a slow arm speed, you're almost forced to throw it anhyzer out of your hand. So once again, if you're one of those beginner players looking to develop your backhand, make sure you focus with a putter or a mid-range, keep it nice and straight into the fairway. Stay away from the drivers for now. As you learn to develop a faster arm speed, you're gonna get a lot better. You're gonna pick up speed and those drivers are gonna go much further. But for now, if you're a beginner player, stay away from those drivers, stick to the putters and mid-ranges, keep it nice and straight in the middle of the fairway. For greater detail on fixing this death move, stick with me till the end of the video. Death move number two. All right guys, one of the next common problems that a lot of players have is looking to throw a power grip whenever they're very close to the basket. What you wanna do is really focus on that fan grip. The reason is with the power grip, when you're looking to throw far, that power grip really gets your fingers underneath the rim nice and tight, kind of like a hook. You're looking to squeeze down and almost engage your forearm muscles, a lot of your arm muscles. With the fan grip, it's really easy for it to come out of your hand, much accurate for shorter shots. So when you're looking to approach the basket from about 150, 100 feet or so, you wanna make sure you really focus on that fan grip. Pinch with these fingers and that thumb just between there so you can control the flight plate and it's gonna be much easier to approach the basket. So when you're looking to get really accurate on those short shots, make sure you avoid that power grip and really focus on that fan grip. It might feel a little bit uncomfortable at first to where it feels like it's sliding out of your hand, but that's completely okay. You just don't wanna feel like your hand is stuck underneath the disc whenever you're very close to the basket and you're looking to be really accurate. Death move number three. All right guys, one of the next common problems that I see a lot of players have is either gripping the disc too soft or too hard before they go and throw the disc. Whenever you grip the disc too soft, it's really easy for the disc to fall out of your hand, therefore you're not gonna be very accurate. Whenever you grip the disc too hard, it's really hard to have that consistent release, and a lot of the times you're gonna hold on to it for too long. The perfect grip strength is right when you go to reach back, you kinda wanna squeeze down just like you're shaking somebody's hand. You're gonna squeeze down just to a 60, 70% of your power. You don't wanna grip too soft, and you're not gonna grip the disc really tight Whenever you grip the disc too hard, it's really easy to grip lock, and that's of course something that you don't want to do. Death move number four. All right guys, one of the next common problems that I see a lot of players have, and although this might be very surprising to some players, but I see most players throw in a field for practice way too much. The reason why I think that's a common problem is because if you relate throwing in a field to a disc golf course, you're not gonna find a lot of holes that are completely wide open. You have to be able to learn how to hit a gap, how to watch your disc fly. Throwing in a field is great if you're trying to learn a disc, if you're trying to try a different technique and you don't want to take up a lot of space on the course if you don't wanna get in player's way. Going out to the field is great if you're working on technique, but going out to the course is where you're going to see the most amount of results. And I always like to stress to players, you can throw multiple shots off the tee pad Totally okay as long as there are not players behind you. If you're letting people play through and you're practicing hitting angles, hitting different shots that are going towards the basket, that is totally fine. Going out to the field and practicing with discs, that's also another thing that is okay, but you don't want to stick entirely onto practicing in the field. Remember, you wanna to go to the course, that's where you're gonna see the most amount of results is by practicing those types of throws on the course. 
When you throw in the field, you don't get the trees, you don't get the obstacles, you get to see the disc fly, but you don't get to see how they're flying towards the basket. Death move number five. All right, guys, the next common problem that I see a lot of players have, and this especially goes to the people that like to throw forehand or are looking to learn to throw forehand, and it has to do with their grip. One of the main things with sidearm is you wanna make sure that you tuck the disc into this fat part of your thumb. A lot of people have it outside of their fingers like this. You wanna make sure that disc gets tucked nice and in there. When you tuck it in there, you can actually put pressure on this middle finger which makes it a lot easier to use your wrist and actually have a hard part to grip the disc on because you're gripping on the inside of the rim right there. A lot of players don't tuck that disc in and it creates it to where it's not very stable in your hand, flies out with a lot of wobbles. So whenever you're looking to throw forehand and you're looking for a little bit more stability in your grip, make sure you tuck that disc into your thumb right here, squeeze down nice and strong on top and make sure you can put pressure with your finger however you grip the disc you can put pressure on the inside of the rim right here. If you're looking for more details on this death move, make sure you stick with me till the end of the video. Death move number six. All right guys, one of the next common problems that I see a lot of players have is they're trying to avoid learning how to throw backhand because they're very comfortable throwing forehand or overhand. And one of those main reasons why they typically stay away from the backhand is because they have not learned the fundamentals. They're probably throwing a driver whenever they don't have enough arm speed to get the driver to fly straight. And so they typically grab it, they throw forehand or they throw overhand, and they can get the disc to fly straight because they release it on those harsh angles. What you really want to do is really try to get comfortable. You wanna learn the fundamentals for the backhand to where it becomes very easy for you to at least throw straight down the middle. You wanna focus on the putter and the mid range on your backhand game. You wanna learn those fundamentals. You're gonna be able to stick it into the middle of the fairway and the backhand is going to get you more distance, more accuracy, and altogether your game will be way better in the long run. Death move number seven. All right guys, one of the most common problems that I see from the beginner, advanced, and professional levels as even though they're playing a lot of disc golf, a lot of practice rounds throughout the week, they're not developing a routine throughout their entire game. What you want to do, even your practice rounds, when you're practice putting, during a tournament, is try to find a routine that is comfortable for you to stick to. It's really easy to get you back into those fundamentals. You're going to be able to line up correctly. You're going to grip the disc correctly. And a lot of the times the routine is all mental as well. And what I mean by that is you're going to be able to clear your head. You're going to be comfortable on the tee pad because every single time you step up to your shot, you're going to have the same exact routine to where everything feels in sync. If you want more detail about this death move, stick with me till the end of the video. Death move number eight. All right, guys, one of the next common problems that I see a lot of players have is using the X step whenever they're not ready to use it on the tee pad. The best thing to do is to learn to throw standing still. The reason is because the X step requires several balanced steps across the tee pad. Standing still, you get to really focus on the fundamentals. You get to focus on the correct reach back, body position, and especially pull through and your follow through. With the X step, a lot of players become very robotic. They think of each step with crossing their feet, and they're not thinking about the fundamentals that go along into the backhand form. Death move number nine. All right, guys, one of the next common problems that I see a lot of players have is the tendency to play with lower level competition. And I mean that on a local level and on a tournament level. I see a lot of players who are looking to get better on a local level. The best way to do that is to play with the best player in your area because you're gonna get a lot more competition. You're gonna be able to watch the player as they play your local home course. And then for those that are out there playing tournaments, it's always great to first of all, get into the tournament atmosphere. You're gonna get a lot more competition, which is going to build your game and take it to the next level. And it's always great to move up to the next division, whether it's half of the tournaments that you play throughout the year or you just stick to that division and really try to compete and build your game to the next level. I go to tournaments all over the world where I see players playing intermediate or rec that are clearly advanced level players. And even if you are a rec or intermediate player, it's great to move up to advance for at least half of the tournaments throughout the year because that's going to take your game to the next level and you can actually watch what you've been working on throughout the year. 
Death move number 10. All right, guys, one of the next common problems that I see a lot of players have whenever they're on the course is not checking the wind before every single shot. This goes back into building a routine. What I do in my routine before every single shot is grab a little piece of grass, check which way the wind is going. Even though there's not that much wind, you still want to get in the habit of checking which direction it's going because it is going to affect the shot even if it's a small amount. Putting, approaching, driving, get in the routine of checking the wind before every single shot because it will affect the angle of release that you're looking for and how the disc is going to land and maybe how you're going to throw your approach shot towards the basket. Death move number 11. All right, guys, the next common problem that I see a lot of players have is getting very down or negative on themselves during a practice round. Whenever you're out there and you're looking at getting better and improving your game, although things can get very frustrating if you're not doing things the right way, I've been in that boat before. I've gotten frustrated on the practice field, but the best thing that you want to do is just let things go. Really focus on isolating the problems that you have. Get back to the fundamentals of what you're trying to work on and then make things a little bit easier on yourselves. Take video. Always go back to have something to relate to if you're having a problem on the practice field, but make sure you're not getting down or negative about yourself, talking bad, because that starts to really relate to all other facets of your game and all of a sudden something else is going to be affected by the bad or negative talk that you're having or you're going to be affecting the players that you have. When you're out there on the practice field, the best thing that you can do, try to be encouraging, try to get through the stuff that you're working on, and then ultimately your game is going to get better in the long run. Death move number 12. All right, guys, the final death move in this series is when I see players use the wrong type of disc for their shot selection. And what I mean by that is I see a lot of players get very comfortable with the driver or the fairway off the tee pad and maybe even sometimes putting. But what you want to do is try to stick to those putters and mid ranges. I know it seems really simple and really obvious, but you want to stick to a putter for putting, a mid range for throwing your mid range shots, and a driver for going for a long distance shot. There's some players out there that just get really comfortable with a mid range or a driver whenever it comes to putting, but you want to make sure that you have a putter. If you don't have one, go buy one and stick with that with putting into the basket and throwing straight down a fairway. The drivers are designed to have a fade at the very end of their flight and putters and mid ranges are designed to go nice and straight, especially if you're throwing through trees, you want to stick to those putters and mid ranges as much as you can because the driver is going to have a little bit too much shape and you're going to end up hitting a lot of the trees early off the tee pad. All right, guys, thanks for watching the first disc golf death moves video. There will be more of these in the future. If you're looking to improve your game and get rid of those disc golf death moves, click the link below and get started with disc golf instruction.